right, here's our close up. Look at how beautiful the motherboard looks. Let's focus in on the RGB with the dragon right there. Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be taking a look at the MSI MPG Z790 Wi-Fi Edge DDR4 motherboard. I did receive this product from MSI, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this motherboard or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's a look at the retail box and packaging. We'll notice on the back side it has all the important tech specs for you in regards to this particular motherboard. So this has the LGA 1700 socket supporting both Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs. Lightning Gen 5 support that also supports PCIe 4.0 devices. Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, and we have 2.5 gig LAN. Did I mention this has DDR4 support as well? Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here's a look at all the contents. First up, we have our product literature, including our regulatory and compliance information, followed by a quick start guide, complete with the QR code to scan for warranty and product registration, helpful charts and diagrams walking you through step-by-step -step everything you need to know to get your motherboard and computer built. They also have QR codes for installation as well. Next, we have some nice decorative stickers and some stickers we can use to label our cables three M2 lockers, one MSI USB flash drive. We have a nice Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna with stand. And we have a couple of data cables right here. So we got a 90 degree connection option and we have our straight connection option. Lastly, we have the board itself. Let's look at this in more detail. Here's the board up close. I mean, look at how nice everything looks. I love the silver accent that we have here with the Dragon logo, MSI's logo and branding. MPG Edge since 1986, Lightning Gen 4 M.2, MPG Edge here with the removable sticker. This is really nice though. We got the winning formula here. So we have four memory slots. So we have two PCIe X16 slots as you're seeing right here, these two. And then we have our five M.2 slots. We'll be taking these off and looking at those. And our Wi-Fi 6E module. We've got our LGA 1700 for Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs. We have our instructions. If we're gonna just install two sticks of RAM, these are gonna be the two slots that you're gonna to wanna to use first. Man, that looks nice. USB Type-C, USB 3.0, USB 2.0. We got fans and RGB galore on here. Our two CPU power connectors. Flip it over to the back side. Got our keep out zones. And then let's look at all of our IO on this board. Audio, got our Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth, 2.5 gig LAN, multiple USB type C ports. This one supports our 20 gigabits per second. Everything else looks like 10 or less color coded for you. We have our clear CMOS button and our BIOS flashback button. Then we have our display port and our HDMI port right there. Got a good weight to it. I mean, we got some really heavy heat sinks and shields on here. Let's go ahead. Let's take these ones off in the bottom and look at our M.2 slots. All right, we have all the covers off revealing our five. Yes, you heard me correctly. One, two, three, four, five PCIe Gen 4 slots right here amazing so what i like about this board already is the longevity so say you use it for a couple of years maybe you're gaming streaming editing pc and you want to upgrade again well now you have five m.2 slots to cram a bunch of storage in there and repurpose this maybe as your own home server things like that so i love this board and all the storage options they give us right there plenty of room for different size drives keep that in mind so really nice. And then again, for you, 2.5 inch or 3.5 inch drive, people, you have multiple options to choose from if you wanna go that route as well. Also, our primary drive slot has a really nice removable heat sink cover that requires no additional tools. So look at the bottom, how it's positioned right here. And then we just line those up. It'll slide in and then we just press and it snaps right in. So it's got a nice tool-free installation, really clever, engineering there. I like that a lot. Just slide in, press down, and there we go. We can easily 
install or remove as needed. Now we got our PC built right here. Let's take a close up look at the motherboard installed. All right, here's our close up. Look at how beautiful the motherboard looks. Let's focus in on the RGB with the dragon right there. So cool. All of our connections, CPU up at the top. Then we got some fans and RGB, another fan in the corner, main motherboard connector, USB 3.0 and USB type C. Further back, we have our GPU, HD audio down there, front panel connections, USB for our hub for some RGB. Look at that. So clean, looks really, really nice. Now let's talk about the BIOS. So once you enter into the BIOS, this is gonna be the easy mode that you'll be seeing on your screen with some system date time, some speeds, some key metrics with some temps and voltages. Then we have our different options. So first up, we can choose CPU. A lot of stuff just right at a glance right here. See our RAM, storage, fan info. We can pick and choose the fans we wanna look at. Help section, if you need any help. We have our M flash, favorites, hardware monitor. We can go right into that. Again, pick and choose what you wanna monitor right here. And then just a little X if we're done. You'll notice then we have a couple of things we can toggle on or off, CPU fan fail warning, ERP ready, HD audio controller, our TPM 2.0, here's some VMD RAID settings, easy LED control. You may have noticed too, our boot priority, our XMP profiles and our game boost, we can turn that on or off for the CPU. But if you really wanna tweak your system, go to the advanced section and now look at how everything changes. So we have our settings right here, system status. Just kind of quickly try to browse through everything for you, DMI info. Then our advanced section and look at all the different sub settings right here. So we got our PCIe, we have our ACPI, integrated. We have two options for this right there. Thunderbolt, USB, power management. Then we have our wake up event setup. Whoops, let's go back. Then we have our Secure Race Plus. And we have utility installer right there enabled. Here's our overclocking settings and you have two different explore options. You can do normal or expert and pick and choose what you wanna tweak at your own risk. So it's just the normal option and then we'll go to expert for you experts out there. So have a lot more options here. Then you'll notice, we go back, we have our M flash settings, OC profiles. So if you want to save multiple overclocking profiles, that's where you can get access to those. Back to the hardware monitor we already looked at. And then we got our beta runner right here if you wanna give that a try. But that's gonna be our advanced settings, very similar, but again, we have way more control right at our fingertips. And you can always toggle back if you'd rather just stick to the easy mode. Now within Windows, I wanted to show you some MSI software. So we have MSI Center downloaded right here and we're currently under the hardware monitoring tab. Some of this might look familiar if you're looking at some of this information in your BIOS settings, but we have some right here within our Windows desktop, which is nice. No BIOS necessary. We got our CPU frequency, our GPU core clock, some quick temps right here in usage for our GPU. We have some additional RPMs and fan measurements, some temps and voltages right there to easily see at the side. Next, moving right along, our middle tab is our features and we have downloaded Mystic Light. So this is how we can control all the RGB in our build with our system fans. So we are using thermal take fans and they do play nicely with the MSI connectors for RGB directly the headers connected to it. So we can choose, you know, everything. Do we just want to control the motherboard? 
and which LEDs do we want to change? You have that option there. In our case, our Lexar RAM, we can configure again individually or together. Pick and choose right there. You get the idea though. So I like that we can just do individual ones like IO cover, or we can do all of our different connection options. And we have multiple profiles, game sync right here, ambient link, and then our mystic light settings. So you can choose to enable some of those or not. Then you'll notice we have a support section. This is really helpful after you get your PC built. Go check out the live update where then you can do a scan and that will update your drivers, things like that, especially if you're missing like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of that. You can find that right there. But I do want to point out there's an advanced option. So if we do this, this will take us to any sort of BIOS updates. I'd recommend after you get your PC built, if you have no issues, go ahead, just update the BIOS right then and there so you never have to worry about it again. So I did that already. We have nothing left to update, but you can find that right there within the support tab. It's a little bit hidden, but really helpful to do all that right away and just knock it all out. So MSI Center, I really like. It's super simple and easy to use. Here's some additional settings right there. And then we have our feature set. So this is where you can install different programs like we installed Mystic Light. You get the idea. There's companion app, gaming mode, graphics fan tool. So depending on what you're after, they have quite a few things for you. I just like MSI Center to update my motherboard and all my drivers and to have the mystic light settings that we already looked at. Makes everything nice, easy, and simple to set up and use. So now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the MSI MPG Z790 Edge Wi-Fi DDR4 motherboard. First thing I want to say is one of the pros is for sure, hands down, all of the great I.O. options that MSI gives you. That's why I really like their boards. They do a fantastic job actually giving you a lot of practicality and usability with what you can connect to this board. So we have Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.2, 2.5 gig LAN. They're giving you some nice Nice future proofing there. Also, in regards to the build quality, I expect great things for this board for years to come. I currently use in my primary computer an MSI motherboard. It's what we're capturing this content on right now. It's been running for like three or four years with zero hiccups, issues, or anything like that that. So I'm expecting the same great build quality with this particular board and I have no reason to believe anything different. Now, I will point out that I like the BIOS settings in MSI, very easy and logical to navigate. And I would argue that their Windows software is good enough as well too. But some of you might disagree with that and that's totally fine. This is just my own experience with MSI products. Now, with that being said, this is a DDR4 board, which is nice because you're gonna buy cheaper RAM and you probably won't notice or really even care. Say probably 95, 99% of you doesn't really matter. But at this price point, it feels expensive for giving us a DDR4 board. So in that case, it should probably be DDR5. You're not saving any money buying this board technically probably as it is. You'll be saving money with the RAM. You can probably get a lot more RAM um, bang for your buck, but it'd be nice to see this a couple of bucks cheaper than it currently is. Other than that, in regards to this particular board, I would say that the only thing is it supports 12th and 13th gen CPU. So maybe you buy a 12th gen CPU now, then you can grab a 13th gen CPU in a couple of years. But after that, there's probably not going to be any sort of longevity with it. And again, it won't even have DDR5 at that point. So it'll be interesting to see where this kind of, you know, goes in the future. But I will argue in regards to its longevity is the fact that we have plenty of M.2 slots on this board. So maybe you use it for a couple of years as your primary computer. Maybe you slap a 13th gen CPU in it. Five years down the road, you're ready to upgrade. Well, this would still make a great board to use for any sort of like home server storage, things like that. Maybe even just like a you know, secondary streaming PC, anything along those lines, you could get really creative with all the different options that this board has. So that is a pro and a con, so to speak with it. But overall, so far, so good.